Hello everyone, welcome to Exotic Astrology and today we shall discuss on June 2018 I shall try to give a brief overview on what is happening in June and there are some major uh, events which are going to happen so we will discuss about them alright so if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below okay so finally the sixth month is here and god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him all right so there are many transit videos which i have made recently the transit of ketu in the nakshatra of shravan the link will be in the description so please go and watch that and i have also made the video of saturn transit into mula nakshatra that is also happening on fifth so that is also a very important transit so please watch that video and then jupiter uh, retrograde in libra that video is also there and rahu transit in pushya nakshatra all right so these videos i have made and why i am saying that you watch those videos because these are slow moving planets jupiter saturn rahu ketu so they do not uh, change very fast so they will not have an impact monthly they will have an impact yearly over 18 months or for two years three years so they will not specifically impact every month so to understand this month or any month we need to first understand the uh, slow moving planets like jupiter saturn rahu ketu so their transit videos i i will link in the description below and i have also made the video on mars transit into uh, capricorn conjunct ketu so that video also you can watch so now what's happening is on 8th 8th june we are having the conjunction of mars and ketu exactly so mars and ketu what happens when they are conjunct i have already said in the video but to give a short recap mars is exalted in capricorn why is it exalted because capricorn is the dry field where we do our activities it's the original 10th sign of the zodiac so mars which is the soldier gets a very nice feel to act on his will and his decisions where there is no obstruction on the other side in cancer it get, gets into debility because it is a place of emotions where you think more internally and you think about others you don't think much about yourself when you are in home so there mars uh, doesn't feel very comfortable but now when mars is in capricorn it is exalted it's a, which means our ability to act in whichever houses mars is ruling in our chart in those areas is very very strong and mars is a very action oriented planet so we are likely to take many more actions in those areas so now when mars is conjunct ketu ketu is the headless planet which means that some of the actions which we take pertaining to mars may not be the right ones or we might take it hastily or we might not think too much before taking those actions so it is highly recommended because uh, now mars ketu is in shravan nakshatra that we do proper meditation and we chant right mantras and then we do the necessary prayers and the sadhana which is required before taking any particular decision so on 8th of june these two will be totally conjunct and before that the month is starting as we all know jupiter is in libra rahu is in cancer ketu is in capricorn saturn is in sagittarius venus is in gemini sun mercury is in taurus and mars is in capricorn so this is how the month of june starts so on the 8th mars ketu are exactly conjunct so what hap what can happen around that day is some very strong thing pertaining to the areas which mars is ruling that thing can come into forefront and we may likely do some blunder in those areas suppose mars is the ruler of your third house or fourth house then things related to education or short distance travel you might if mars is ruling the third house you can uh, take some very quick decision on to move to a certain place short term and then later on you may think oh should i have, should i move here or should i should i not move or suppose mars is ruling your fourth house then you will think that oh something pertaining to education or property that will depend on the dasha which dasha you are undergoing something pertaining to property or education or your mother or home luxury something related to these things you will likely take a very fast decision so before you decide anything on 8th please be careful and with proper caution with proper 
डिलीजेंट्स यू डिसाइड डोंट हेस्टली डू समथिंग स्पेशली इफ मार्स इज रूलिंग योर केंद्रा हाउसेस वन फोर सेवन टेन देन दिस कैन बी मोर प्रोमिनेंट बिकॉज देन दैट चेन दैट डिसीजन विल एफेक्ट योर लाइफ बिकॉज द लॉर्ड्स ऑफ द केंद्राज आर वेरी प्रोमिनेंट इन आर लाइफ ओके सो ऑन द एथ वी नीड टू मेक श्योर दैट वी डू नॉट टेक एनी डिसीजन टू मच हेस्टली बिकॉज केतु डजन हैव द हेड सो वी माई टेक टू मेनी डिसीजन मोर देन वॉट इज रिक्वायर्ड और वी माई टेंड द पनिशिंग पीपल ऑल्सो for some bad or something wrong which we think apparently that they have done to us so it is re- required that we maintain some level of for- forgiveness that day towards those people who might have hurt us before and things could come into the surface and ketu also represents things from the past so things from the past could come and because both are in shravan nakshatra so shravan deals with hearing so we need to properly hear and hearing not in a literal sense but as when you read a book they say that read between the lines which means we need to properly take a note of the situation and then act not instinctively act just because uh, we are uh, feeling to do like that so don't go by feeling go by the reality all right so that is the suggestion which i would have for everybody during eighth then on ninth venus is moving into cancer and venus will be conjunct rahu till a long time 25 days almost okay so then what happens is when venus moves to cancer it is going to be conjunct rahu not exactly in the first uh, around 10 days it will not not be very near but by uh, 20th around it will be go very near okay so because of that what will happen now venus is our ability to love it is romance sexuality our partners etc and rahu represents illusion so it can happen that if we are in a relationship depending on the dasha then there can be some sudden unexpected things which happen or whichever house is venus is ruling in your chart so suppose venus is ruling your 10th house you are a capricorn ascendant then it can happen that something related to your career uh, takes a u turn it can happen because rahu represents those things which you do not see or it can happen that we become too much overly optimistic or overly emotional when venus and en- en- enters cancer to the in pertaining to those areas where we, which venus is ruling in our chart and because it is cancer we are likely to become overly emotional so when venus enters enters cancer from 9th we need to make sure that we uh, do not stay too much in our inner circle because then what can happen is we might feel that things are getting too much overwhelming for us overwhelming in the sense that we might perceive everything very 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 personally suppose somebody says something to us because cancer represents the heart it represents the emotion so something somebody tells to us and we might feel that it's very painful to us we can feel it sometimes okay so we don't uh, we, we don't have to take things personally so we we need to make sure that when venus is in cancer with rahu there is a level of detachment we should maintain because otherwise we might end up hurting ourselves and others also too much and on the other extreme on the 7th from cancer we have mars so it can happen that when we are not finding emotional fulfillment in relationships which is venus in cancer typical venus in cancer emotional fulfillment in relationships then we might blast on the other person it can happen it can happen with our partner specifically or to the areas which venus is ruling in the chart so we need to make sure that we do not get carried away too much with emotions now generally venus transiting cancer is not a issue but when any planet transits with rahu then there is a serious issue which comes up okay so we need to take care on those lines then on 10th mercury is moving into the sign of gemini from taurus and then what happens gemini is the own sign of mercury where mercury is very happy because mercury represents our ability to communicate our ability to understand this world basically that is what mercury is jupiter is more of the wisdom which we gain from this world but mercury shows those things which we learn at a gross level the how this world functions this this person is my friend this person is my enemy he is my husband she is my wife these kind of things these these, these domains come under mercury so when mercury goes to gemini it, it it's a very positive trait because gemini is the sign 
uh, originally the third house yes third sign is gemini so gemini itself represents communication so when mercury is transiting in gemini you will see that people are becoming more and more social people are becoming more and more outgoing as they say people would love to communicate people will love to talk more people will love to discuss things people will love to uh, be a bit non-judgmental and try to see the other side of the coin so this is a very positive transit for mercury on 10th and then on 13th there is the new moon in taurus this is the uh, the new moon is happening again because of the purushottam mass the adik mass which is uh, going on now currently so on 13th again there is a new moon in taurus and then because of this new moon again whichever house taurus is in our chart as per our ascendant we will feel that those areas of our life is again taking a new beginning okay and this can be used de depending on whichever house taurus is falling in our chart so new beginnings can be encountered during this time and then what is happening then on 15th sun moon mercury are coming together on the in the sign of gemini and the, because sun is also almost at the end of taurus and then moon is also at the end of taurus and mercury is already in gemini so sun moon mercury will be conjunct in gemini from 15th so that is a very nice time and then we will see after 15th the because sun has also entered gemini now the gemini energy will become very prominent you will see people will like to go on dating people will like to go on short trips people will like to go on short encounters people will like to join the gym people will like to uh, talk more on sometimes unnecessary topics also so be uh, take caution that we do not get unnecessarily into too much debates with people especially on social media or if you have a youtube channel then it is likely that many people will write unnecessary comments and you you and me everybody will have the tendency to reply so generally what i do is if somebody is putting some hate comment or some useless comment which i feel is not worthy of my attention then i just ignore that comment so if you are into some kind of social media or social propaganda or social business no, these kind of things then you need to make sure that you do not get unnecessary into arguments and quarrels and conflicts because gemini can do that sometimes the problem is not with gemini the issue is coming with mars and mars and k2 in the sign of capricorn and then venus is also in cancer so because of that we will feel that oh this person is hurting me i don't like that person so let's go and blast okay now venus in cancer uh, i forgot to say earlier is a very good time for developing relations with our family members and our closed ones because cancer represents the inner circle so people within our inner circle it is very good it's fantastic when we can relate to them and we can develop our uh, connections properly so that that is a fantastic time you see so use this venus in cancer for uh, developing family relations with friends closed people close friends or people outside of the family can also become your closed uh, members now during this time when venus is transiting cancer the only thing is it's with rahu so be a uh, bit careful of letting uh, people inside into your inner circle and then on 25th june mercury venus and rahu will be conjunct in cancer all right so mercury is moving very fast <laughs> so during this time what happens you will see that now the energy will to some extent shift from gemini to cancer okay from the end of june basically and then we will realize that now people are not too much interested in going for short encounters okay now people are more interested in building heart to heart connections which is cancer so that will start happening by the end of the month but primarily the month of july uh, of june sorry will consist of the energies of taurus gemini and towards the end of cancer so basically to summarize this month is very harmonious for uh, eating food that because taurus and cancer both represent food and venus in cancer also represents devi annapurna that which is uh, w w who provides us with food so it is a very nice time to get together with people and cook and eat and enjoy and have fun yes gemini go on short encounters 
go to picnic go to restaurant go here go there and saturn will also be in mula nakshatra so the focus will be to build deep rooted connections so i will not speak much on saturn and jupiter because uh, you can watch the transit videos but to give a brief summary because saturn will enter mula on 5th so we will now try to build deep rooted connections with the areas where saturn is ruling in our chart okay we might approach some things and plant new seeds and jupiter will also be in retrogression till july first week so this is the last part of jupiter's retrogression this is the last month it has already been retrograde from march uh, beginning i guess march mid something like that and therefore now it is transiting in vishakha nakshatra so it is a very great uh, it's a very good time when jupiter transits in retrogression in vishakha because now we have the possibility to figure out different options which we might have pertaining to the things which jupiter is ruling in our chart okay so if jupiter is ruling the 10th house it can happen that things pertaining to career we might have different options and then after retrogression it will again enter swati nakshatra so swati again shows that cloud it's like that vacuum it's like too much <laughs> which means that when jupiter enters vishakha and uh, from vishakha it enters to swati we will feel that uh, from some narrowed down options we now have too many options so then swati helps us to get a broad picture of everything from the as they say na bird's eye view swati is very good for bird's eye view so we can make a note of the things which we have pertaining to jupiter which of our houses jupiter is ruling and our spiritual connections also okay and then basically this month the new moon full moon that energy is centered around taurus gemini and cancer so it's a very good time to enjoy eat outside have fun only thing is take caution of not to get into unnecessary arguments debates and do proper meditation that is the lesson which june month has for us okay all right so that is it from my side and the request which i have is please watch the transit videos which i have posted in the description and in the comments below so by that you will get more understanding of what is happening in the month of june and how the energies are playing out okay so wish you good luck until next time if you are new then please subscribe and if you want a consultation then please approach me to my website the link is there in the description below okay wish you good luck bye bye see you